Hmm. Today I'll fly the P-51H. I sure hope there's no JU-280As to deal with every single game. No, bro. <laughs> you know, this area of the game with all these super props it used to be one of my favorite parts of War Thunder, but now with all the JU-288 spam, it's just kind of like not fun anymore, especially if you're playing on the US side. It's so rare that you actually have a really good game at 6.0 or around 6.0, just because every single time it's like a whole German team full of four JU-288s or three JU-288s and an HE-177 and then a BF-109K4 and then a TA-152H. And that's just how it is, like 60 to 70 percent of your games. In the other games that aren't like this, the teams are just bigger, but there's still four JU-288s in the other team. And I don't know about you all, but I find it extremely boring trying to chase down and kill bombers because there's really no like struggle to kill them. You just kind of shoot them while just staying out of their turrets. And half the time there's always one or two left that end up running to opposite sides of the map as far away as they can from you only to drag out the match by another 15 minutes only for them to inevitably lose. So ultimately I came to the conclusion that it's just better just to leave the game. Go land, back to your base, J out, and get into the next game and just take the loss because it's not fun trying to chase around JU-288s. And frankly, especially when it comes to making content, it makes it extremely difficult to do a solid review on this plane, the P-51H. So in fact, this is going to be much less of a plane review and more of just like game commentary and I hope you guys still enjoy it. But anyway, I am going to talk about the P-51H just a little bit. So, the P-51H, it's a rank 5, battle rating 6.3 super prop for America, and it's one of the best super props in the game, but it's really hard for me to actually convey a solid review of it because I don't have that much experience actually fighting other players in it because of the aforementioned JU-288 spam. But from what I've gathered my experience with this thing, this thing's a pretty solid aircraft. Actually, it's really, really solid. It's incredibly fast for a prop, it climbs extremely well, it handles really well at high speeds, and it's got adequate energy retention. Though, with all of these advantages, I still ran into trouble, especially with TA-152Hs, which I kind of assumed would happen because the TA-152H is an absolute monster if it even has a slight energy advantage, e or even if it doesn't sometimes, it can absolutely just wreck you. But maybe I just suck. It seems like once I run into the enemies, specifically the TA-152Hs, I'm usually at the same altitude as them, or at a slightly less altitude. Now, the TA-152H doesn't climb that well, but it gets an air spawn, so that really, really helps it out. Now, the reason this thing absolutely claps me just about every time I see one is because A, I'm not that good in props, and B, these things absolutely have just incredible energy retention, even if you pop those flaps all the way out. And I feel like a lot of people underestimate the turning performance of the TA-152H as well. And by a lot of people, I mean me. <laughs> skill issue actual. Now in my opinion the real fun comes if you get a full up tier to jets, as long as you're not seeing a full team of SU-11s, which I haven't had that experience yet. The thing is when you get up tier to a jet game, people tend to underestimate the power of a fast prop, and the P-51H is exactly that, a fast prop. You can actually keep up with a lot of these jets coming out of a dive, and if you can successfully get a jet to start dogfighting with you, that's a basically a guaranteed win on your part. Hell, if you can get more than one jet slow, you can probably win a 1v2 or 1v3 as well especially if they're jets like ME262s or something. And of course, once you do get into that early jet era, there starts to be a lot of premium jets people just buy their way into and typically have no idea what they're doing. So winning fights to get those people is very easy. All right, before I get into some gameplay, I wanna talk about some of the drawbacks to the P-51H. There aren't very many, but there are a couple things you should be aware of. This thing is still a P-51, so tight turn fighting performance isn't really there. So in order to do well consistently in this thing, you do kind of need an altitude advantage. Obviously that'll help anybody in props, but still it's especially true with this. One of the other drawbacks is the fact that your WEP is limited, so you can't really just go full WEP the entire time, because if you do, you will eventually run out, especially if it's a longer game. I typically didn't have that many issues with it, but a couple of times I did run out of WEP, and when you're using WEP in this aircraft, this thing is much, much more powerful. Or, well, I guess it should put it the other way around. This thing is much less powerful if you don't have web. Something else a lot of people would consider a drawback is that the 50 cal guns that it has, a lot of people would say they're not that good. They're, they're not, you know, they're not great. They're not going to, you know, one-shot people really almost ever. But you do have a shitload of ammo, so you can afford to spray a bit. And, of course, 50 cals are known for setting people on fire, especially with those tracer belts. Or if ground pounding is your thing, these things can destroy light pillboxes pretty easily as well. But of course, you guys all probably know that's not my type of gameplay with this thing. Other than that, I really don't think there really are that many other drawbacks, except for maybe the battle rating some might consider, just because you can go against jets a lot. But in my opinion, the jet matches were much more fun than going against other props, because of course, JU-288s. 
But I already ranted about that in the beginning of the video, so let's get in some gameplay. Okay, so this game is a full up tier to 7.3, and I said this already, but these are the games that I prefer in this thing. So being a P51H and a full up tier like this, I'm likely going to be the highest player in the game, except for this ME262 in front of me, which should have let me know that this is not a regular 262, and that it's in fact a C1A, which is why he's at such a high altitude so early. For those of you who don't know, the C1A is an ME262 that has a rocket booster in the back, essentially giving it a whole lot of extra thrust, making it really, really powerful, especially against a prop like this. Luckily, he was a bit distracted trying to kill this B29 on my team, so I don't think he realized that I was nearby. At least until after the B29 was dead, and then he kind of does, and it looks like he's trying to put me in an energy trap here, but I'm going to abuse the range of these 50 cows and get a critical hit in, probably crippling him. I'm not terribly sure what I crit, but it looks like it was enough to get him to put his nose down and try and gain some speed back. Honestly, if he kept going up, I don't know if I would have been able to get any more shots in because I'm basically at stall speed at this point. I mean, I'm basically playing completely brain dead right now anyway. But those shots were enough to make him panic and put his nose down. Which, at this point, I realize I'm probably going to win this fight as long as someone else doesn't roll in or he just runs away in a straight line because I'm not going to catch him if he does that, obviously. Luckily, instead of putting his nose down and running away, he actually puts his nose up and begins to try and climb away from me. Now, of course, he's going to climb infinitely faster than I am because he has that rocket booster, but I get my nose around on target, and I'm going to abuse these 50 cows once more, getting hits at over a kilometer away. Once he starts getting really far away, I still try and put some shots in him just to see if I can get lucky, because I know I'm not that slow yet, so I know I'm not risked of stalling out. But once I do realize he is committed to this climb, and I'm not going to get any more hits in, I'm going to level out so I can get a little bit of speed back. He's going to loop over on top of me in an effort to get on my 6 and get his guns on, but luckily I have enough speed after I put my nose down a little bit to turn inside of his loop, just enough to where he's not going to be able to get his guns on. He takes some shots, but they're not anywhere near lead enough because he couldn't get his nose all the way up there. After he takes those shots, I put my nose up and lucky for me he follows and I know he's not going to be able to get his guns on me again, especially with the damage I inflicted on him earlier and the fact that he's probably running out of rocket fuel at this point. And now as you can see, we're both at pretty much stall speeds and the fact that we're at stall speeds and considering the damage I inflicted on him earlier, he is going to begin a flat spin. But then my lovely teammate sees this ME262 that I just put in a flat spin, and instead of going to help out the rest of my team down low that's absolutely getting destroyed, he decides he wants to take this free kill. So once that ME262 is dead, I'm going to count it as my kill, I'm left basically 1v an entire team of jets. Now, I'm going to die here, because if I tried to play passively and just try and boom and zoom one person at a time, the timer would eventually run out and then I'd lose the game, so I decided to get a little more aggressive. Plus, even if I did that, I'd probably die anyway, but whatever. But as you can see, all of these jets are at a pretty low energy state right now, and I have all of the speed and altitude in the world. I am going to try and boom and zoom my way through this in the beginning, but I'm going to get impatient and try and get in there and get as many kills as I can, which turns out being, like, one. So basically what I'm saying is I'm professional. No, just kidding. I, like, suck at this game right now for some reason, dude. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, I'm going to keep just kind of going in and out of this horde of enemy jets and for a little while it kind of works but of course there's still like five or six jets around so eventually i am gonna die and i'm gonna lose all that speed gonna lose that energy advantage as you can probably see i'm doing right now i'm just kind of slowly but surely losing the advantage here it's not like i really had a chance of winning anyway but you know it still would have been cool now even though i hardly get any kills this game and i'm completely outnumbered this was still actually a pretty fun match and i kind of wish i could get these up tiers a little bit more because frankly, these full up tiers were not that common. You know, originally I was planning on commentating over the end of this match and everything you're watching right now, but in reality, all I'm doing is just turn fighting a bunch of jets and I'm not doing it very well either. So there's really not much value to talk about there. So anyway, the P-51H. Is this thing worth playing right now? No, 6.0 is terrible. And I, after this video and the Act3U video I just did, I'm probably not touching 6.0 for a very, very long time. I am sick of it. <laughs> I never want to see JU-288 again, so I'm not going to play around here. But otherwise, the P-51H is a really, really solid contender for one of the best super props in the game. Although, to be honest, if I had to choose between this and the TA-152H, I'm probably taking the TA-152H. It's just chasing JU-288s is just not enjoyable, but if you're on a team full of JU-288s, usually, not, I shouldn't say usually, but a lot of the time you can end up carrying your team, which is kind of fun. Unless, of course, the opposing team just ground pounds the whole time and bleeds all of your tickets before you can even get in a good fight, which is also extremely annoying. 
But that's what Gaja's business model encourages now, which is kind of sad. But hey, I'll just play a different part of the game that's hopefully less broken. So I'm either taking it down to tier 3 or tier 4, or I'm gonna go back to some like 7.0 to 8.0 jets next. We'll see, I don't know what I'm feeling. Alright, that's gonna be it for today. What do you guys think about 6.0 Matchmaker right now? Is it absolutely terrible? Because I think it is. Alright, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.